Hello Internet. Welcome, uh, welcome to my new place. You may wonder why my background looks different. This is my favorite poster, by the way. I don't know if it's here or here. It's a good poster. Rick and Morty. Um, I, I, uh, new background, new place. That's why I'm a little delayed. But, besides that, um, this week, this week's wandering was all around, um, AutoML, which is basically the automation of machine learning. And, while going through this process of researching the different tools, the ecosystem, the industry, how it's growing and all that stuff, I, uh, I started thinking about the democratization of technology and access to um, technology and how fundamentally the way that we live and the world we live in today has been changed based off of the internet and the technology that underlies and sits on top of the internet. And it's not just having access to it, but it's also having the ideas behind it be simplified and also be easily accessible and usable to the average person. So when writing this piece and when going through the research, I was thinking of a comparison between, uh, if you think back in like the 1850s or 1860s uh, in comparison to today, if you went back then and you thought your common knowledge was similar to theirs, you, there may be some pieces that are common between the two, but if you brought up smartphones or autonomous cars or even birth control or um, the internet in itself, the people then would think that you were either a genius or crazy. Um, but for us today, it's common knowledge. It's common knowledge to know how to use this. It's common knowledge to know how to Google something in most places. So I extrapolated out and started looking forward and to say, okay, well, if this basic tech is common knowledge today, if this whole process of automation of machine learning and the simplification of it, of doing it and creating machines that can quote unquote think, um, what does that mean for the future of us and our humanity and our society? Um, when people have easy access to creating or uh, manipulating machines that can think in their, in their favor and other people's favor, um, it could be good or bad. So that was kind of the ethos and the thought process around this week's research. And there's a blog post, you should go read it. I'll show a little like a uh, scroll thingy here. Um, there's a lot that I talk about in the post, but in a nutshell, I basically talk about how today we create machine learning uh, at a high level, the pipeline, the, the pipeline and workflow of how it's done. Um, then I dive into some of the tools that are uh, being created today to automate some of that and what parts they're automating. And then also I talk a bit about the future of what, how people are pontificating about what this looks like down the road. And there's tons of links and videos and articles and books and all that stuff. So feel free to go check it out. So in this video, I'm going to keep it brief as usual. Uh, I want to touch on really two things. So the first is basically um, one subset of how automation is being done in machine learning, and then the other one is kind of looking forward into the future. So the pipeline today for creating a machine learning uh, algorithm or a model that predicts, uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens, and I'll show a, a quick pipeline here. But in a nutshell, I'm gonna generalize this because there are different uh, workflows that people show and there's more detailed ones and less detailed ones, but we'll keep it simple for now for this conversation. There's really three things that happen when you create a machine, machine learning algorithm or a model, not an algorithm, is uh, basically you need to gather, prepare, analyze, and play with data. So think of like one piece is data. So you're, you're getting your data and prepping it. The next one is that you're basically building out your model. And then after that, you're gonna deploy that model into the world. So you have these three things. And the majority of the AutoML tools today are focusing on basically the build process in the center. And that's a small subset of a, a much larger pipeline. And the sad thing is, is the majority of data scientists actually spend, I think it's like 80% of their time on the um, gathering piece and kind of uh, prepping the data piece. So that being automated uh, sooner rather than later would probably help a lot of um, uh, data scientists today and their psychology of hating that part of the job. Um, but going back to this build piece, it's, it's really fascinating how they go about doing this. And uh, an analogy that I came across, which is quite interesting, which is uh, kind of comparing it to Netflix, right? So uh, say I love Avengers, which I do. And I'm, I, I'm a big fan of Avengers Endgame, and based off of watching that on Netflix, Netflix recommends to me another movie that might be similar that I might love. And I'm sure many of you and many of people you know spend a lot of time watching shows and movies on Netflix because the content's so good and the recommendations are so great in comparison to that person's preferences. So you have this recommendation engine that's recommending this amazing content to keep you hooked and to keep you watching. 
So that's one, uh, that, that's basically a model in itself, right? So Netflix is recommending content. So now if you take that idea and you abstract it above it and it's more of a meta learning model. So take that idea and apply it to auto, um, auto ML. So the process of creating a machine learning algorithm is really kind of two things that are happening when you're choosing a model that's best for you. So you have your data set, right? So you have the data you have, and then you have a whole group of models. So you have like a buffet of models, right? You can choose from any of these models. And historically, the choice of these models was based off of the um, machine learning gurus basically experience. So they knew, they knew what certain models fit this data set best. So they would maybe choose five out of 50 and they would kind of try and test those five, figure out which one is best out of the five and then take that one and use it. But the thing is, there's so many different variations of models that it's literally, I mean, it's, it's possible, but it would, it would take forever for someone to actually test all of the models on this data set to figure out which one's the ideal and the perfect one that fits this data set. Because you think about it as like, it's like matchmaking, like Tinder, right? You're like matching two people, you're matching a model to a data set and you got to figure out which one fits best. Today, uh, what they're doing with this AutoML tools is they're basically saying, okay, we're going to have a, a recommendation engine sitting on top of this process that basically says, based off of this data set and based off of all the previous models that I've played with in the past, I recommend you take these three and test them out. So it's basically automating that, that matching process um, today. And which is which is amazing because it basically gives this this abstracted layer of meta learning this meta model that's telling you which models to choose for your data set it's um it, it's a form of meta learning and they're basically giving them the option to have a more uh, accurate baseline to start from so you have a better kind of better start so that's super interesting and like I said, this is a small subset of the overall pipeline. So I'll show a picture here that basically I drew some pictures on here stating that there's a, there's a small piece that we're focusing on today. And there's the broader piece, which is the entire end to end machine learning process that some companies are saying that they're trying to tackle. Um, I haven't found any kind of uh, evidence of that or proof that it's actually working at a, a, at a, like a scale scalable level. Um, but it's still interesting to see that people are attempting to do this because if you, if you kind of, I guess, look forward into the future and say in 20 to 30 years, I don't even, I don't, I, timelines are irrelevant because everyone's wrong with predictions, but in the future, imagine that there's a world where we can actually automate the entire end-to-end -end process for creating a machine learning model, right? And if you think about that, what you're doing is you're creating machines that actually improve, create, and constantly evolve other machines that are improving on themselves. So it's kind of like this iteration loop, and it's uh, it's it's like turtles all the way down, right? So you're you're removing the human completely out of the loop of creating machines that can think, and then this evolution of uh, of intelligence and the ability to improve these models is going to consistently go, um, and the humans kind of just sit back and and watch and hopefully reap the rewards instead of uh, you know are punished from it. And that's, uh, that's really it. I mean, there's a lot more I could talk about, but I wanted to keep this short. It's, um, it's really interesting to think and pontificate about the sci-fi future of what this looks like, because if we are able to actually automate the entire process, then you know, that's, that, that's machines creating machines that are then creating other machines, and then it's just, it's, it's just consistently keeps going. Um, but I guess the piece I want to get back to here is instead of thinking about the future of the sci-fi world where the humans are removed, there's going to be a period in transition between there, which is actually going to be critical for the world we live in today. And it's going to be, it's going to hopefully improve it drastically because like I said, having the democratization of technology and the ability to actually have common knowledge that's not so common in the past, I think would be really beneficial for us if this, this, this technology of machine learning was democratized and was simplified and the use and access and usability of it was was easier um, so yeah that's uh, I think it's fascinating I'm really excited that these tools are coming out and they're evolving and they're getting better and it's getting easier to do um, what do you think uh, let me know your thoughts and also if you want to subscribe to my newsletter feel free I'll put a link in the description um, and yeah I will uh, see you next week internet <laughs>